Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about reporting top quartile performance. So we will create this dashboard here. So this is going to be a case study where I create this dashboard here, which is a relatively simple dashboard, but it's got this functionality here that's going to um, identify and highlight the top quartile companies the middle two quartiles um, of companies and the bottom quartile of companies along with this threshold line and also highlight your company so that you can quickly identify where it sits within a range of performances. In this case it will be production efficiency. Okay so let's get started. Now the first thing I want to cover is a bit of theory around what it means to be in the top quartile. So how is it defined? So if we look at this chart here, so the top quartile is the selection of data points. So if we think about each one of these bars as being a data point, so it's the selection of data points which have got a value assigned to them. In this case, it's production efficiency, which is above 75% of all of the other data points. So it's not above 75% as a percentage value here. It's above 75% of all of the other data points in this, um, in this data that's been analysed at this point in time. So we can see that there's a line here. Now this line is known as a percentile line. It's the 75th percentile line. Okay, so when we're talking about top quartile, what we're talking about is any company which has got performance which is above the 75th percentile line. Okay, now the 75th percentile line is the value of this is actually 81%. Okay, so any company which has got a production efficiency of above 81%, and we can see here that these are the companies here, these, these five companies here, are in the top quartile. Okay, the top quarter of the companies in terms of performance. In this example here, it's production efficiency, but it could be anything. So, in other words, like I mentioned in the, that point there, 25% of companies are above this line here. Okay, so the 75th percentile is an in, is, 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 is the cutoff or the threshold. And it's got a value assigned to it, whereby any, any company that's got performance above that is in the top 25%. So I mentioned that before, the, the 75th percentile line in this example here is 81%. Now, if all of these values changes, or even some of these values change, then this value will be recalculated because it's relative to all of the values that are currently displayed in this chart here. So if everyone's performance increases, this value would increase. If everyone's performance decreased, then this value would decrease so that it always represented a threshold where there was 25% of the companies were above the, the threshold and 75% of the companies were below the threshold, okay? I think we covered that. So more generally, we're talking about this percentile line here. Now, it just happens to be that the 75th percentile line is the same as talking about top quartile, okay? For, the, the same is true for the 25th percentile line. So the 25th percentile line would be a bit lower down and it would represent a line with a threshold value, any companies below that would be um, twenty would represent twenty five percent of the the actual values, and any companies above that would be seventy five percent of the actual data set. And it could also be ninety percent or any percentage you want. So if the percent the ninetieth percentile means that ninety percent of the companies are below the value, and ten percent of the companies are above this value, this cut off value, this percentile value. Okay, so in terms of how we calculate this value here, I'm going to talk you quickly through this. Um, the good news is we don't need to worry about it because DAX will do it for us, but I think it's interesting just to understand how it's calculated. So the first step is we get our list of companies and we sort them in order of production efficiency. So this is the production efficiency that's been assigned to each of the companies. And then we... Um, give them an index value. Okay, so just really an index from 1 to 20. So it's just a number in the companies from 1 to 20. And that's just called the index value there. And then we rank each of the companies. So this is the rank that we assign to each of the companies. And it's using this equation here, index value minus 1 divided by the total number of values, which is this 20 
minus one. Okay, and that'll then assign a, a rank to each of the companies. Um, step two is now to extrapolate. So we've got to then find which rank here represents 75, not 0.75, 75%. Now in this example, and then, and then what we do is we find the corresponding production efficiency value. Okay, now that it, it would very, very seldom happen to be that this would actually turn out to be a, um, one of the percentile values you're looking for. So what you would need to do there is extrapolate between these values here to find out which corresponding production efficiency value represents the 75% the value here this, in, in terms of the rank. And that's fairly complicated and we don't need to do it because Dux is going to do it for this. But this was really just to show you how you would go about calculating this value if you were to do it in Excel or to do it manually. Okay, so let's get on and we'll start to create some charts in Power BI that's going to let us calculate these automatically. Okay, so let's start creating a, a bar, a column chart and I will add in a percentile line. Now the first one I'm going to cover is going to be the really quick and straightforward and easy way of doing this. So we've got our um, our data model here which is really just a simple table with a list of companies and a list of production efficiency values. Okay, so I've created a measure here and all it is is a sum of the production efficiency values. It's just a measure there. So we can actually hide this one here um, for now, but um, in fact, let's just hide it. Okay, so we've got a company and the production efficiency value. So I'm going to go and create a line chart, um, a column chart, which is here. Uh, this one here, clustered column chart, and the axis is going to be a company, and the actual value is going to be this measure for production efficiency. Okay, and here we can see that we've got our companies, and the really straightforward and easy way to do this is to go. Um, first of all, I'm going to add in these data labels. Here we go. Is to go into this analytics section here. Okay, now I'm going to create a video just explaining how to use each one of these and, and, and the features that are available here in more detail. So check the, the link below for that. Um, however, we're going to go down and we're going to look at this percentile line here and we're going to open that up and we're going to add that on. And there's a few features here, but you choose the measure they want to add it on to, add the line on to. Now we've only got one measure here, which is, is the percentage PE. And there's the, the value you want to change in here. Okay, so at the moment, this is the 90th percentile line. We change that to 75. And here we've got our 75th percentile line here. Okay, so it's really similar to the one that we, it's exactly the same actually as the one that I used in the, the wee demo at the start where we looked at some, um, we talked through some of the theory. Um, now there's a few features of this line that you can do to add it up and make it a little bit um, a bit nicer. This this title here can be changed. So this is the 75th percentile line or value. Okay, so you can add some text in here, and then if you go down to this data label and switch that on. And then scroll down, we can change the colour of this, we'll leave it as it is just now, but this text here um, can either be the data value, or it can be the name, or it can be both. Now before we go and um, change that, you can look at the, the horizontal position, which is going to be on the right, and we can see here that because we've got it as a data value, and we can see this is the 81. Eight, this is 81. Now what I'd also want to do is stick in two decimal places here and we can see it's actually 80.0.5, it's 80.5. Um, and we can go in here and we can display both the name which we've assigned here when we define the line and the value. So this is the 75th percentile value. Okay, so that is a really quick and easy way for adding in the percentile value using the analytics, the built-in analytics feature that is, is available for column charts and also for line charts. However, our requirements are slightly different. So what we want to be able to do is a few things. Um, the first thing I want to be able to do is identify 
and highlight these values here dynamically to, to, to clearly visualize them and make sure that they're a different color. So that's the first feature. The next one is that we want to be able to switch between, let's just go back to the actual um, end result. Yeah, we want to be able to switch between the top quartile, the middle quartile, and the bottom quartile. Okay, now, if we go back into this one here, this analytics feature doesn't allow you to dynamically calculate this value here. You've got to set that manually for each line. Okay. If I had a little FX button at the side here, like you will we'll show you in, in a second, I don't think any of these do have it. Nope. Then we would be able to put some sort of DAX code behind the, the actual calculation of this value here, but it can only be set for each line um, and hard coded in essentially within, um, within the Power BI desktop. So what I'm going to talk you through next is how we would go and create this line using some DAX rather than using this analytics feature. Okay, so let's now go and create another version where we use DAX to actually draw the line that the analytics did in the previous one. And that gives us a little bit more flexibility in actually creating a dynamic calculation and a dynamic line for the, the different percentile lines. So to do that, we're going to go and start with this um, this visualization here, which is the the line and clustered column chart. So we'll just put that in here, and then we're going to use company as the shared access, and we're going to use PE as the column value. Okay, so we can see we've got a list of columns here, and then we're going to go and switch on the the data labels. Right, so that's the first part. We've got pretty much the same as we had before. Now, because we've got this ability to have a line value as well, this line value is going to be where we're going to put the the actual threshold line for the percentile line that we want to talk about, I want to display on here. So to do that, we need to create a new measure and we're going to use the percentile measure or function within DAX for that. Okay, so there's... Um, this is the function we're going to use, percentile x dot inc. Okay, so just as a side note, there's a few different functions here. There's a percent, a bit like sum and sum x. There's a there's a percentile and there's a percentile x. There's a percentile um, inc, and there's a percentile dot ex exc and a percentile x dot exc. Now, the difference between these two here is some include is which values they include and exclude from the actual calculation. Now the value that we're going to use here is this one here with the ink because we want to include all the values. The reason I'm using that is that it is the value that generates the same value here as the analytic analytics value which Power BI automatically generated in the previous example. Okay, so here is the um, the function here. So the argument, the first argument is a table. Okay, so that's a table we're going to iterate over. The second is the expression and that's the expression we're going to um, calculate for each row in the table and this k value is really going to be the the value that represents the percentile that we want to calculate okay so in this example here we can see that our table is production efficiency because it's a table that we actually um, loaded these these um, the company and the associated production efficiency percentage into um, the expression is going to be just the production efficiency value and the k value is going to be this 0.75. So it's a fairly straightforward um, function to implement. And we can see that the value that was, this is a card here, and the value that's been calculated is this 80.05. So let's go on over to Power BI and we'll create that and we'll see this in action. Okay, so we can see here I've created a measure called percentile PE percentage. And we're using this percentile x dot inc and we can see the three arguments. So we've got a table here, we're going to iterate over. We've got the expression we're going to add to that table as we iterate over it for each of the rows. And then we've got this k value here, which is the percentile value that we want to return. Okay, so I've done that and I've added that into a card here and we can see that it's returning this value here, 80.05, which is the same value which we had using this analytics approach here, 80.05, okay? So if I go back into here, now what we're going to do with that value is we want that to represent a line, or we want a line to represent this 
0 0.05 value here. So I'll click on here and we're going to add it in to this line value here. Now straight away we can see that something doesn't look right because the line value is mimicking the column value. So it's basically mimicking the, the production efficiency. So what's happening here? So let's just have a quick look at this. Now remember for DAX each one of these values here for this line is calculated um, on its own. It's like an island, okay? So what is actually happening here is that the table here, which has been iterated over for this value here, is being um, has got a filter context that's that's set by this value here, this solar sun pulse, for example, here. So we are only, only looking at for this value here, we're iterating over the table. Now it's not the whole table, it's only the table that's in the current filter context. And the current filter context for this particular data point here is solar sun pulse or company equals solar sun pulse. So the production efficiency table contains one value, one row, which is the production efficiency for solar sun pulse. Then we're going to look at the production efficiency and then we're going to go and calculate the percentile, the 75th percentile over that table which has got one row in it, which is, of course is going to be the same as this here, which is going to be 97%. Now we can see that in action if we click on one of these, we can see that I've filtered this here. Now here we've got the filter context here, because this is a card, is the, is, is the whole production efficiency table, because there's no other filters applied. However, as soon as I apply a filter here by clicking on this value, there's a filter applied here to this card, because we've got this um, set up a cross filter of solar sun pulse, 97%. So the the production, sorry, the percentile value is also 97%. So what we need to do is some way that we can override the filters so that we are iterating over the whole table, okay, to find this, um, this value. So to do that, we use calculate because it allows us to change the filters, to modify the filters. So let's put a calculate statement here. Now the expression that we're going to use um, in Calculate is going to be this expression that we've already got, so we don't need to change that. However, the, the table, the filter we're going to use to modify this table here, this production efficiency table, is going to be all selected. And we're going to go for production efficiency. And that should do it. Just put an extra an extra one in here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to first of all use all selected. So all selected is going to be a filter override basically that is going to select all of these values here that are in this visualization. And then we're going to apply this um, this expression here which includes this reference to the table. Now this table here is going to be everything that's selected. Okay, so we're going to iterate over everything that's selected. So now we can see that this line here is exactly what we want. Good, because for each one of these data points, we're going to iterate over every one of the values in this production efficiency table. And then come back with the, um, the value here, this 81% value for everything. Okay, so now we've done that, let's tidy this up a little bit. So we're going to go and um, get rid of the data um, the data labels for the this customized series, and we're going to turn these off. Okay, for this value here, this percent of value here. So that's a percent of line. We will change it to be. Um, we'll go back up to shapes. And we'll make it a dash line and we'll make it slightly subtler. There we go. Okay, so that is um, that is how we would replicate that percentile, um, the 75th percentile line. So that's the first step. So we've now replicated it. So next we want to go, if I just go back to the, the end result here, next we want to be able to go and highlight each one of these as we select the top 
middle and bottom quartiles. I mean, the middle is, is basically the middle two quartiles, essentially, but the top, middle, and bottom. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how we would do that. Okay, so the next step is to create this slicer that's going to allow us to, to select the top, the middle, or the bottom quartiles. Okay, so we're going to be able to select those, and it's going to then um, format those with different colours depending on which one we've selected. So to do that, we're going to go to modelling and we're going to add in a new parameter. And we're going to call this percentile selection. And we're going to go for a decimal number. The minimum is going to be 0.25. The maximum is 0.75. The increments is 0.25. And default is 0.75. OK, so we're going to add those in. And we can see we've got a new table here and it's got a couple of columns in it. One calculated column, which is really just using this generate series to generate the, um, the start, the end and the increments. And then we've got this measure here that allows us to go and actually pluck that value that's selected um, in, that, in the slicer from and, and use it in other measures. And we'll, sh we'll show you that in a second. But before that, let's go and change this up a bit. So... I'm going to change this to a list. So here we can see the list here. Um, now I want to be able to only select one value. So we've changed that to be a video button now. Okay, so that's going to be what we're going to use. Now, it's not a great user experience to see 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 0.75. It isn't even a percentage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to actual words. So to do that, we're going to go in and add in another calculated column to this table here. Uh, new column. Okay, so we've created a new calculated column and that's going to be quartile selection. And we're going to use a switch statement. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to switch this value here, this percentile selection value. So rather than be 0.25, we're going to that's going to be called bottom quartile um, or 0 0.5 if it's not point it's just like a switch statement it's just like a an if statement really I'll leave a video below a link to a video below that explains it in a bit more detail um, middle if it's not 0.25 it'll be middle quartile and if it's not 0.75 it will be top quartile <coughs> so that is um, let's just show you that in action here so here we go we can see that we've added this new calculated column and if it's 0.25, it'll be bottom, 0.5 is middle, and 0.75 is top. So then I'm going to add that quartile selection into here. Okay, so bottom, middle, and top. And then we'll just change the sort order there. And we want to sort is it ascending or descending, it'll be the other way around. Yeah, so we want top to be the top here. Okay, so that isn't doing anything just now, but it will do in a second once we actually link the value that's selected here to the percentage, the percentile PE calculation here. So let's go into this PE percentile PE calculation. So within here, rather than hard code this 0.75% in here, if we go in and we add in the measure, which is going to be this one here that was added percentile selection value now that's going to go and pluck whatever value is selected here and it's going to it's going to add that in and so that's going to make it dynamic okay so let's go just make sure that that works and we can see the line changed okay and the value changed here Okay, so now whatever value we've got here is going to change and that's going to allow us to get this dynamic line that moves about. Okay, it's a little bit difficult to see just now. Um, let's just go in here and go to data colors, uh, data label, sorry. And I'll move down here. I'm going to take the background off. Yeah. Okay, so you can see it's slightly better. Okay, so that's going to be our our line here and it's going to be linked up to this um, this slicer at the side. Next we're going to go and 
uh, to create the conditional formatting so that the top, the middle and the bottom quartiles are conditionally formatted with a different colour depending on the selection from the slicer. Okay, so we're going to go and allocate the or create the the measure for the conditional formatting of these columns here, depending on the quartile selection here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, or, or just to let you see how it's going to happen, is that we've gone into the formatting options here, and we've got this default color here, which is this blue color, and right next to it we've got this FX. Now this FX allows you to add some conditional formatting to the actual color. But we've got an option here that's called field value and it actually lets you select a field which is um, a DAX measure essentially that will hold the logic that determines which color is injected into this value here. Okay, So that's going to be the kind of overall approach we're going to take to, to apply the conditional formatting. So we need to actually go and create a DAX measure that is going to go into this um, conditional formatting formula here. So this is the one I've created here. It's called color, um, column color, conditional format and column color. So if I open it up, there's quite a lot of um, text in here and it might look a little bit daunting to begin with. Um, but what I'm going to do is I just make it slightly smaller so we can see it all in one place. So I'm going to talk you through each one of these steps and it should be fairly straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and define a few variables here that represent the company, which is Energy Smart, the color for Energy Smart, which is this color here, and the color, percentile selected color, which is going to be the color we're going to allocate to the bars when we select the top, middle or bottom percentile. Okay, so that's going to be this color here, which is like a kind of dark gray color. So once we've done that, we can use these in these various different formulas below. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump straight to this result here, this variable that we've set up as a result, because this is going to be the logic that's going to determine which um, which color we apply. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a switch statement, and we've got this switch, and then by adding this true um, argument as the first argument in the switch statement, it will select whichever one of these is true first. Okay, so the first thing the switch statement will do is say, is the bottom quartile selected? Um, or is the percentile selection, quartile selection um, value equal to bottom quartile? And if it is, we're going to use this logic here um, to determine what color we're going to go and apply to that particular bar. If this value is selected, middle quartile, then we're going to use the middle percentile color. And if the top quartile is selected, we're going to use the top percentile color. Okay, so this is going to determine which of these values up here is used based on what value we have got selected here. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we need to determine what the logic is for, det for the, each one of these colors. So we use another switch statement. So bottom percentile color. So this switch statement is going to be, again, it's going to use true, which means it will choose whichever one of these arguments is true first, starting with the first one and then going on to the second one. So if the selected value production efficiency company equals company. So if the, what it's basically saying is, if this value here, because remember each one that this, this measure is going to go and, um, and be calculated for each one of these bars here. So if this value here, the selected value, is energy sun, which is, um, or energy smart, which is this value here, that's going to be the first check. Now, if it is, then it's going to go and set the um, the color to be this energy smart color here, which is going to be the blue color. We want that to, to stay blue. Now, if it's not energy smart, if the production efficiency value is less than the percentile bottom measure, right? Now this percentile bottom measure is, um, is a measure that I've created here and it basically calculates the percentile for the bottom um, 25%. Okay, so percentile bottom, let's just pull that into here just now. Okay, 
So it's not a it's not being formatted as a percentage, but it's 65. So if this is below 65%, that's the percent of bottom value, then that is going to be um, a cue to go and actually highlight those colors to be the percentile selector color. So it's going to highlight those as this gray color here. Now the next one here, the middle percentile, um, the middle percentile color logic is going to be the same here. First of all, it's going to check: well, is energy smart in this middle? Is it ener is energy smart one of those values? Um, if it is, then I want to color that this blue color. If it's not, it's going to then check to see is the PE, and it's an and statement here: is it is the PE greater than the percentile bottom color, which was at sixty five percent uh, percentile bottom. Um, PE value, which was 65%, and is it less than the percentile top value? So that means that it is one of the values that's greater than the bottom values here and less than the top values here. So that's going to then identify these colors and the, these these values in the middle as being the middle two percentiles. Okay, so the middle range basically. And then finally, and we've got this um, this top percentile calculation here, which is basically looking at using this percentile function to um, to go and return the value for the seventy fifth percentile. Okay. So let's go back into our function here. Um, and if it's a top percentile, it's basically just checking to see is the PE value greater than the percentile top value. Okay, and if it is then um, we're going to use this percentile selected color again, which is going to be this value here. And then, uh, having defined each one of these variables, then we go into this result here that I've already talked through. If the the bottom quartile is selected in the um, the slicer here, we're going to use this logic here. If the middle percentile is selected, we're going to use this logic here to determine the colors of the bars. And if this value here top quartile is selected, we're going to use this top quartile logic to identify and allocate the colors to the bars. So hopefully it'll make a bit more sense once you see it in action. So having done that, let's go and click on the visualization and let's go in to our data colors, go to this FX, go to field value and we're going to go to this um, production efficiency and we can see here we've got this conditional formatting column color and we're going to click on here. Okay so we've got top quartile selected and we can see that these colors have been changed to be gray. Now because this value here is smart energy it's still blue because that was the first check in the logic that we created to see if this was blue so that's fine. Middle and we can see these are all the middle quartile and then bottom we can see that's in the bottom quartile so that's working just fine something that isn't working is we want the other colors to be a, a, a lighter an even lighter gray so that they're kind of in the background and de-emphasized so let's go back and make a couple of changes here okay so for each one of these switch statements what you can add in is a uh, like an else statement. So if I just um, put a comma at the end of here and then the value we're going to add into here is going to be a grey value. Now I need to go and just get that value so I'll pause it for a second. Okay so I've got this grey value here so I'm going to go in and let's create another variable. Now I always would recommend creating a variable if you're going to use the same value multiple times, which we are here. So I'm going to put in um, column color. Just call it column color. And this is the value we want it to be. So then we put in this else statement here. And then we're going to call that column color. I'm just going to do the same for each one of these other bits of logic here. Okay. And then column color. So what it's essentially saying is, if it's not the company, um, which is energy smart, 
and if it's not, if the current PE is not greater than the, the top, is it, or the current PE, if, if not, so if this is not true, the PE is greater than the top percentile, then the else statement is basically saying default to this, col this color here. Okay, so if this logic is selected here, which is the top percentile color, if it's not the color, if it's not energy smart, and it's not in the top percentile, then it's going to be that grey color there. Okay, because that's the the only other option that there is available within this switch statement. So let's see that playing through into here. Okay, perfect. So now we can see that if we select the top quartile, we can see that for each one of these, the switch statement has been evaluated because we've selected this top quartile. So that is um, that has caused this top percent um, top percentile color um, code to be um, to be used to determine what color is applied to the bars. And that code has gone through each one of these and evaluated that switch statement. And because each of these is in the top quartile, then it's coloured in grey. But because this one is also in the top quartile, but it also happens to be energy smart, because energy smart, or the check to see if it was energy smart, was the first check that was um, was carried out in this logic here. It stopped after that. It just finds the first argument here, these three arguments, which was true, and then it just stops. So that's why that is still blue, which is what we, we want. If we choose the middle quartile, well, energy smart, smart is not one of any of these. However, these are all in the middle quartile, so they have been coloured um, the, the darker grey. The other ones are not in the top quartile, or this middle quartile, so they have defaulted to that lighter grey. And then if we choose the bottom quartile, a similar story. Okay, none of these is energy smart. Um, however, these have all passed the logic that says they are in this bottom quartile that's, um, that's set by this measure here. Okay, so that is the um, the conditional formatting. So it allows you to quickly identify what our company is and how that, we can see that it's in the top quartile. We can see which other companies clearly are in the top quartile or the middle or the bottom. And um, just makes it a little bit more interactive and look a, a little bit better and, and helps you focus in on the data that's important to you. Almost done. In the next section, we're going to go and look at adding some conditional formatting text at the top here, just to make it um, a bit more obvious as to what this value is here on this line. Okay, so the final step is to create a dynamic title that we can use that incorporates this text here and the, the actual percentile um, thresholds to make it explicitly obvious what what has been displayed on the on the chart. So let's go and go into the measure that I've created here. Now if we go into our um, format in here, we've got a title, we can see we've got one of these FX buttons here that means that we can use some a measure and the dark code with that measure some logic to actually create a text string that can be used to populate that title. So this is the measure that I've used here. Um, it's called text column chart title, so I've just prefixed it with text just so that I can find it myself. And um, we've start off with some variables. This is really just a piece of text that's going to be the, the end of the string. Um, then we have got the text that's going to be used if the bottom percentile is um, value is selected in the slicer. We've got the text if the middle percentile is selected, and we've got the text if the top percentile is selected. Okay, so all of this is doing is constructing a text string, the, and then whatever the value is that's selected in the slicer, um, and then adding on the PE is less than, so if we're talking about the bottom here, less than the percentile PE percentage, percentage bottom, so it's less than the bottom percentile, percentile threshold um, percent, and then adding on this extra, um, this extra string at the end here. It'll be a, a little bit easier once you see it. Actually, um, it, it can be difficult to visualise what it's going to actually produce as an end result. But anyway, nevertheless, each one of these is going to be the logic to present to create the the text if the bottom, the middle, and the top is selected. And then finally, we've got a result here um, variable that's going to use a switch statement to go and determine 
which value is selected and if the value is the bottom quartile we're going to use the bottom quartile logic middle quartile we use the middle quartile logic and top quartile we use the top quartile logic so it all hangs off that slicer and the value that's selected in those three options really similar to the conditional formatting for each of the bars really so I'm going to go and click on this FX button here uh, I'm going to go into the production efficiency table I think that's where they put it and we're going to select this measure here okay so we can see this is the string the top quartile and then in brackets I've put PE greater than 90 um, 80.5 company um, close brackets so the top quartile companies by PE 2021 okay so that's the top quartile companies if I choose that we've got the middle quartile PE greater than the the low threshold which is 64.75 and less than or equal to 80.5 companies by PE 2021 then finally if the bottom is selected we can see the bottom quartile and um, PE that should be less than so let's just go and change that PE and we'll say less than yep, that's a top quartile one one bottom quarter here less than Do you see this in action okay bottom quartile PE percentage less than 64.75 which is the, the threshold value for determining which companies are in the bottom quartile so a little bit of a just an, a, a little extra Info, bit of information there and it's really because we don't have a value here on this line as well we don't have a value here like we did in the previous one if we go back to this one here we can see we've got this value here now that option isn't available to us here it's just a line now if we do switch on the data labels for this line it puts a data label for every value there so um, we don't want that happening so this is just a, a means of actually identifying the value for that line there and make it explicit in the title Okay, so hopefully you've now got a bit of a better understanding about the top quartile, middle quartile, bottom quartile, percentage, percentiles, and how to, um, how to calculate those and how they're calculated. Certainly using the percentile function and incorporating that into a visualization, a column chart visualization with, um, with a line, either using the anal analytics, so if you want it to be a bit more dynamic and be able to highlight the um, the bottom, the middle, and the the top quartiles. How you go about setting that up and setting up the conditional format, and etc. So if you found this useful, it would be really helpful and much appreciated if you could give the video a thumbs up. And um, if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos that I release, more or less every week, then um, hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a new video. Thanks again for listening and watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video.